Um, so yeah, I've got the, the wonderful task of trying to talk about social media ROI. Um, and I guess, like from, from my, ex my experience and um, the, as Afrigator evolved as a company, we started to realize more and more that like clients and people like really wanted to engage with social media, but nobody could quantify what it meant, you know, like, so, you know, should VW have a Facebook page? Why? You know, what, what, how can we, how can we determine whether it's successful? Things like that. And I think hopefully just looking, this is more around some case studies more than anything else, just kind of looking at what international players did and then also a little self-promotion looking at like what we did um, for a clients in particular. Um, and hopefully you can get something out of it. So I'll just, I'm gonna bore you for like three seconds and just tell you a little bit about social code because I'm here under the premise of social code. Um, and we're essentially a digital agency with a strong focus on social media. Um, I mean, Gregor and myself come from quite an extensive, like practical experience in social media. Um, been doing this for about eight, eight years, like, you know, th through trial and error largely. Um, we, in April 2010, we acquired a company called Intelligence Limited because we realized that while we have all this wonderful IP, we also needed to implement like apps and stuff like that in, in the thing. So we bought this development company um, and for the last like 14 months, we've just been focusing on kind of streamlining it because when you take another company, you bring it in and say, it's chaos. So um, it's been an interesting um, experience the last 14 months, but we, we, we're growing quite nicely. We have 12 staff now. Um, 12 staff, 12 staff, and 92 clients worldwide. So um, it's getting quite exciting. This is just uh, some of our key, key clients, and what I want to highlight here is not really the brands per se, but the relationships that we have. So we work with really small SMEs, we work with large listed companies, um, and we work with agencies as well. So we've got a great relationship with Jupiter Drawing Room, um, as well as Magna Carta. So we do, we do kind of lot, a lot of collaboration work with a lot of different kinds of people. So that's really us. So, okay, that's the end of us. This is where we get interesting, okay? So who thinks social media ROI is about sales? You can raise your hands. Come, everyone, raise your hands. Nobody thinks, nobody thinks that it's about sales. There you go, cool. Okay, what about if it was also about these things, leads? measurability, brand equity, one-on-one um, -on -one conversation is like kind of the big point because that's really what I like. Um, engagement, community, you know, these things are um, kind of soft ROI things which we, co we can't necessarily equate to money, but it, it's all part of the mix. So these guys at um, effectivewebagency.com, right, I think they're pretty crap, but what they have done um, is they've created an ROI sort of like table, okay? So basically, it starts at an investment point, um, you move into the implementation stage, then you do your kind of your impact and your measuring, so CTRs, whatever the medium is that you're using, and your financial gain, revenue, transaction, new customers, okay? So ROI is the difference between those two things. They have a little formula as well, okay? Um, if you want this, you can just get it there. There's a tiny URL, get it from down there. So essentially, return on investment as a percentage is equal to profit gain from social media, less cost of social media, divided by cost of social media times 100, okay? Simple layman terms, if you make a million rand profits um, and your cost is 200,000, your return on investment was 400%. So it's one way of taking, okay, well, this is what we did in social media, this is the effect, but how do we get to those numbers? Because it's not always about the numbers, right? A very smart person once said that return of investments of social media is that your business will exist in five years' time, okay? And I know I'm probably sitting in a room here where a lot of people are going to disagree with that statement. And if you disagree, I'd love you to put up your hand, please. Okay, no one. <laughs> um, okay, I'll argue the fact, right? You can't say to me, I know VW is a client, so are you saying if VW doesn't play in the social media space that they won't be around in five years' time? Well, I would argue that if the key competitors of VW are using social media in the right way and are gaining leverage and equity and converting into sales, VW is going to have a massive impact, ultimately. And social media isn't a separate thing anymore. It's not like, well, you know, we've got traditional advertising and we've got above the line, below the line. This is, social media is completely integrated today. It's like it has to be part of everything we do. Um, it's part of every marketing spend. And unfortunately, companies aren't doing this and they aren't really investing as much as they should in terms of social media. Ask me because we focus on this and we don't make a lot of money. Um, 
So media types and the measurability, right? This is um, pretty interesting because basically we're taking every sort of traditional thing, right? We can say, okay, fine. With mobile, we know CTR. We can track the return on investment. We can take the customer from when they click that ad right through to my sale input, right? We know exactly what our cost per acquisition is. We can work out all these things. Same with bad ads, same with search ads. And ultimately, what happened with the internet was we created metrics, okay, which killed us ultimately because clients now look at this and say, well, you know, this is shit. I mean, like, you gave me a 1% click-through ratio. My cost per lead was 50 rand. Um, like, I'm just going to put a TV ad up because, you know what, TV ads sell cars. But, you know, can we measure it? Not really. Um, and social media, no one has a metric. No one has a metric. Nobody says, okay, well, we know if we do this, we're going to get that. It's such a kind of a, it's, you know, social media hasn't been, it's not a new thing. It's been around for many, many years. It's been around before the internet. It's been around before traditional advertising because social media is about us interacting. It's about me saying to Chris, have you seen the new polo? And Chris will say, no. And I'll say, well, you know what, dude, check, it's got all of these things. He's like, oh, really? Wow, cool. And he's going to go out and go look at the polo. That is social media. In its, in its rawness and its practicality, that's what it means. So how do we track that? How do we measure that? Um, what I found interesting was that Nielsen did a, uh, a survey, um, and they haven't updated it yet, but um, this is consumer trust levels by media type, okay? The worst performing one is mobile text ad. So when people see a mobile text ad, they don't trust it, okay? And we move down slowly but surely. We get into what is kind of traditional key TV and radio, radio ads, magazine ads, newspaper ads, brand sites. You know, I find this quite interesting. So people actually trust editorial content over a brand, which is an interesting thing. But the key here is recommendations from people I know is 92%. I will trust someone I know's opinion way more than anything else. And I mean, that for me is the key here, and it's highlighted in red. So the stat is that consumers consider word of mouth as two times more trustworthy as traditional media when choosing products. But this is the key part, right? Social media makes up less than 0.1% of total marketing spend. 0.1%. It's difficult coming in. I'm like, quite scared to be around you guys because I don't know what you all do, and you're probably going to say to me, like, TV works, guys, you know? Um, we shouldn't spend so much money with social media. And it's like, it's cool, but it should be a little more than 0.1%. I mean, surely. So why is it? Like, why does social media not work? Is it because we this, we not that? None of us have 20 million in the bank. And, well, I'm not going to talk about the last part, but... <laughs> Um, I don't have 20 million in the bank, okay? Um, so why is it not working? Why, why, like, why, why are people, why are companies, why are, why are they not investing more money? Why are they not trying to grow community interaction, okay? So I'm going to highlight a couple of case studies which I think you may or may not know about the Dell Outlet um, store. Like if you guys are seeing this, it's cool because there's some key insights that I think have come out of these, these couple of case studies. Um, so what did Dell basically do? And this is probably the first real successful ROI um, in social media. So Dell sold re refurbished equipment exclusively via Twitter with coupon codes. Okay? Here you can see it. 20% of all Dell out there, laptops, desktops, enter that code at checkout online only. Okay? They had two and a half, with 2,500 followers, they sold $500,000 worth of equipment. In June 2009, they had 600,000 followers and they passed $3 million in sales, just off Twitter, okay? Today, and actually this is probably old, they're probably close on 2 million now, they have 1.5 million followers and they haven't released 2010 figures yet, so we don't know, we don't know what that figure is. But you can see the economy of scale here, right? So the bigger your audience, the more chance you have, and when it comes down to this, you're getting great specials, right? And it's the only place you can get it is on Twitter. So that's how they effectively use social media to help it. Um, 12 Force, anyone familiar with 12 Force? Okay, so Best Buy is like, your, you would know 12 Force. Um, Best Buy is a, what did we say, consumer electronics um, company, um, and they created 12 Force. 12 Force is essentially um, like a support channel, but for anybody in the world. You can add 12 Force, like I'm having a problem setting up a, I don't know how to change a plug, okay? How many people know which color like goes into the plug, right? 12 Force will help you. You add 12 Force, how, which color goes where? Okay, they'll help you. So what they did was, is they encouraged firstly a couple, and then it turned into hundreds of employees to engage with customers who have questions. At the end of 2009, 12 Force answered 19,500 questions, and 2,300 employees were actively involved in it. Um, so and they did this for two key things, right? They wanted to set themselves apart from their competitors, and 
They wanted to humanize the organization. They didn't just want to be a consumer, um, consumer goods selling company. They wanted to show there were real people behind it who actually are very insightful and can help. And the, 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 the spin-off from this has been huge for them. I mean, when we went to New York last year, we walked into uh, Best Buy, and the first thing you see is this massive billboard. I mean, it is... It was huge. <laughs> I don't have arms long enough. And it just said, at 12 floors. That's it. You know, it's just, it's such a consumer th mindset in the States now, right? I think everyone out of almost uh, 250 million people in the States know 12 floors. And this is just an interesting model for thinking about how you're going to deal with your clients and how you can kind of almost in a way help hu humanize certain brands. But the real kicker and what most people don't know is that Best Buy launched a Facebook app, okay? And this is the one that's a little bit more quiet. So what Best Buy did is they had a, um, a virtual storefront on their Facebook page where you could purchase products from within the application. Um, not only that, but you could get recommendations from your friends. You could say, I'm interested in this product. Or you could say, there was an easy function where you could like, click on a product and say, get a recommendation. And you could invite your friends who could then give you feedback on a particular product. Okay? Um, so beyond 12 Force, this has generated huge amounts of revenue, right? They had 1.2 million fans on Facebook, and they don't release numbers around this, but if we can quantify what Dell did um, on, a, uh, on using Twitter to sell refurbished equipment, right, with 2,500 people, ultimately 600,000 people equated to $3 million, we can only imagine what that number looks like. So the direct spin-off from that 12 force was the, fa the Facebook component, which ultimately they know what their ROI is. I can guarantee you that right now. So just some better examples of social media, right? So Cisco did a study, and they found that 43% of visits to online support forums um, are in lieu of opening a support case with standard methods. So what's happening is people aren't phoning call centers. They're like, I'd much rather actually want to engage with them on a forum or open a support, or you know, just engaging on, in a digital medium. Um, and this is quite a, quite a large stats really from, um, this also came from an, e from an eBay perspective, right? They were spending $12, um, that was the average interaction by their call center, versus 25 cents by self-service options. So customers could actually find the answers they need and do what they needed to do, A, quicker, and B, it cost them less money to do it, right? You could think about the savings that a company like eBay would have if you <laughs> cut it down from $12 to $0.25. Cents. Um, so Forrester reports that customers report good experiences in forums more than twice as often as they do via calls or mail. That's huge. That's like huge equity, you know? Like, how many times do we phone? Think about phoning telecom. Like, do we really want to do that? Like, do we actually want to, like, sit in that call center? Like, you know you're going to wait 10 minutes before you're going to get answered, and then you're going to deal, who are you going to deal with? You know, you've got to hope you get someone who knows what they do. Um, and this was interesting. eBay found that participants in online communities spend 54% more than non-community people. That's huge. That is massive, okay? So these examples ultimately concern far greater sums of money. So, for example, the $3 million that Dell generated, right? What they did was they created better customer experiences, and I think that's a key aspect. You know, that's what we want to do. Well, that's what I want to tell clients they want to do. You want to create a better customer experience because um, I think about owning a BMW, right, when I did. Um, the, the, the sort of, just the kind of the CRM system that they have in place, right? They're like, they phone you up, and how are things going? And it makes you feel valuable. You become a real brand advocate as a result of that. Um, there's lower support costs, and there's more buying activity in the long run. Because there's the, the old adage that, right, 20% um, of your customer base is going to generate 80% of your revenue. Um, and the more we look in after existing customers, the more chance we have it going to grow. Uh, this is quite a, this is a fascinating one. Cisco saved $100,000 off a product launch. So they have this really expensive router for any technical people in the room, right? It's cost about one and a half million rand. It's like this insane router, like enterprise grade router. Um, but they launched it exclusively using social media. So what did they do? They created an entire world like in Second Life. Okay, and in Second Life they had the CEO like presenting the launch via like a, um, a set up like uh, screens in Second Life, so people could log on to Second Life as their Second Life persona and watch and engage with, with, with this as it was happening. Um, they created a 3D game specifically targeted towards the technical engineers because you know what they identified is that of the 100 people or whatever it is that they invite to this launch, the technical people are never included. 
It's always the executives, but the technical people are the ones making the decisions, okay? So they created it something that was specific for them to get them engaged. And then they did all the same. I mean, they streamed it on YouTube. They had video conferencing. Um, they, had, they did e absolutely everything. So the traditional mobile blogs, blogs, they got bloggers involved. So there's some interesting highlights that came out of that, right? 9,000 people attended the launch event. That's 90 times more than in the past. They saved 158,000 liters of fuel. This is important because what they did was they have it in like wherever, and they fly people from all over around the world. So they flew in 1,000 people from all around the world, and they saved a huge amount of petrol. Uh, they like that stat. I don't know really how relevant it is to us, but still. Um, there were three times as many press releases in normal traditional outlets, and I think also that's because of the, the innovation around what they were doing. It's not just because it was a product launch, it was the way that they executed it and the, and the, and the outlay. They had 1,000 blog posts and 40 million online impressions and exposure, right? Um, at, a, at a $1 CPM, you know, you're saving quite a substantial amount of money. Um, and once, it was one-sixth the cost of traditional launch. And this was classified as one of the top five launches in company history. And interestingly enough, this is Cisco's model now moving forward. This is how they do it now. They don't do the traditional routes anymore because it was so successful. But that's like, that's all Kiff and stuff, you know, like, awesome. We've got this um, great case studies, works with the market when you've got 100 million internet users and bandwidth is so rich. Um, but how does it actually relate to us? You know, and that's kind of the key. So I could give you a lot of case studies, but I'm gonna give you probably the best one that we've had so far. And this is, this is a client of ours. Um, so Southern Comfort came to us and said, right guys, um, we got a problem because we, Digitally, we are nowhere, okay? We need to sell a product. We launched in a new product, which was Southern Comfort Lime, um, and we can't have a website. Global doesn't allow us to have our own website. So what do we do? So we, we started to look at the sales and said, okay, well, you're dealing with 18 to 25 year olds, okay, cool. Facebook's probably the best route for you to go with this, okay? So we created a kind of a whole, it was quite an quite a intensive campaign, but essentially what we wanted to do was, um, bring online to offline and offline to online. That was kind of our objective, right? So um, the idea was that over the course of March, April, and May, we would run these off-con promotions, um, they'd take some photos, you know the Thunder model, right? Thunder.com model, it's a simple model. You guys take photos of you, and like, you know, on the Monday morning you log in and you share your photo, your Thunder, same concepts, okay? Um, so we created this application, we did all of these things, but what happened as a result was kind of phenomenal for us because, um, as I said, it was an exclusively a Facebook thing. We grew the community to 6,000 fans in just over two months, right? The rate of growth is 100 fans a day for this brand, which is huge. Um, high engagement, massive brand equity. The reason why they wanted to do this digital thing was because they wanted to sell their new product. They wanted to get as many people to in, to engage with the new product and to kind of consume it ultimately and sell it. Um, they, they had a, a quota over three months of what they had to sell, X number of units, and that was done within two months. So they completely sold it out. Um, but what they have achieved now is high engagement. This page is phenomenally, I'm amazed at the audience, right? You put something up, I mean, we put up, so initially it was like, oh, welcome, you know, thanks guys, join the page, we're so, really, we're so happy to have you here, you know, woohoo, all that sort of cool stuff. Um, but it got a lot more serious, and so as our strategy like, kind of grew, we started to get user engagement, we started to like, ask people questions, you know, what do they think about this? And it wasn't necessarily related to the brand, but what it did do was it created engagement, you know. If we put a post up on this thing now, within 60 seconds we have like five likes, literally, okay? Um, by the end of the day, on average, there's about 14, 15 comments. Last week, we asked them, hey guys, the next Southern Comfort should be, question mark, 42 comments within an hour. Like, guys, the community engagement has been massive, right? So all we wanted to do, or all Southern Comfort wanted to do, ultimately was sell products. But what we've done is we've created an interesting community that actually they can throw anything at them now, and they'll just like share. Um, and the old adage that you have to give stuff away, 70% of people who like Facebook pages are because they want to win something, this model has fundamentally like turned that on its head because we've seen that, we've seen that with clients. You give something away, they're there, they want the prize, boom, they're gone, okay? This is a completely different model and a different audience. Um, so that's just um, the one. The other one I have to, I 
did have a something more. Ah. There we go. I have to talk about Afrigator, um, predominantly because um, Afrigator was started by four guys, what me um, being one of them, and it was essentially um, more of a, a hobby initially. Well, actually, we identified a need, right? There's this massive site um, in the States called Technorati, um, and I hope you guys have heard of it. If you haven't, go check it out, technorati.com, right? They aggregate, like, now close to 600 million blogs worldwide. The problem with Technorati was back I four years ago when we started this, right? Um, we were a whole bunch of, the, the blogging community was pretty small, um, and like we were quite early adopter-ish, and we really liked Technorati, and we saw the value in it, but we decided we needed something localized, and that's ultimately how Africa was spawned, right? But we had no capital investment, we had nothing, right? We built this product up just using a community and using social media. So what we ultimately did was um, we generated a lot of hype, okay? And hype is, a, is, is is, I don't know how valuable it is, but what it did do is it got us international coverage. We struggled four years ago. Like today, if I had to ask you what an aggregator is, right, most people will be able to tell me, even if it's just Google News, right? Most people will be able to tell me. Four years ago, you mentioned an aggregator, people were like, huh? Like, what's that, you know? Um, so what happened is we got all this international coverage, like we were on CNN and Read Right Web and all like these big tech sites and like in Business 2.0 magazine, you know, with 650,000 subscribers, like we got this amazing international coverage and locally, like nothing. It was like birds tweeting, you know? Like we couldn't get any leverage here. Um, but what it did do, what that international coverage did do was it, was it, it got sort of the NASPAS side away and they said, well, you know what? Like, these guys did something right, um, and then we ultimately sold it to them, right? Um, so this year, we then spawned an ad network from because, like, we got all this investment from NASPAS, but they wanted to see how we're going to make money. <laughs> and we didn't know how we were going to make money. Like, we created a cool product. That's all we did, you know? We didn't know how to monetize or anything. So we decided the best was probably to, to, to spawn an ad network, which we did, and we launched it with bloggers. We created a sense of exclusivity. You know, you, had in, you got invited to be part of it. You couldn't just join. It was like we created a real kind of like elitist thing around it, you know? We just used the community as like, the, it's, it's like, it was like they were like bait, you know, and we could just like reel them in. Um, but this year we paid bloggers, this year so far we paid bloggers 700,000 Rand from that ad network. Um, it's an ad share model similar to Google. But the interesting part is that startups today are also driving innovation using social media because ultimately the, the cost to have a startup today is negligible, right? Um, particularly online. If you've got an online startup, you can get a server for like $100, right? You can run a huge infrastructure on a $100 server. Like that's what your cost is. That's what your capital investment is. You don't have to have an ad anymore. You don't have to do that. You can just use social media and you can be highly successful and you can grow massive companies out of that. I mean, we see this trend all the time overseas. You know, the Twitters, the Facebooks, like these things didn't start because of a press release. You know, they started because they used social media to grow those businesses. And the very, the very things we, the very platforms we use today use the medium to, to get them traction. So it's just interesting to see how that kind of works um, from an entrepreneurial spirit. But if we just wanna, just wanna quickly a analyze the case studies, right? Um, for all of these, these are the primary return um, of investment objectives, right? Dalwood sales, 12 for support, Best Buy shop sales, Cisco cost saving, Southern Comfort sales, as product development engagements, okay? The secondary ROI, which you couldn't predict, right, was cost saving and new customers for Dell. It was brand equity and sales for 12 force. Again, cost savings, new customers for Best Buy, brand equity and sales for Cisco, engagement and brand equity, which we didn't really, we hoped for that, but we didn't really know how it was gonna go. Um, and Africator, like, we just built a whole business on it, okay? We didn't realize that was gonna happen. Um, the, the, the revenue or saving, right? Well, we know Dell made $3 million plus. We know that 12 Force, um, in terms of their savings, I worked it out in terms of their savings, they saved $230,000. Um, Best Buy, we don't know the numbers. Cisco saved 100,000. Southern Comfort won't tell us how much they've sold, but we know that they sold what they needed to sell. They, did, they met their target in the three-month campaign. Um, and Africator, I mean, just a rough idea in terms of revenue, like last year, okay? So there is ways we can equate money to all of these different equities. Um, and I just wanna kind of like um, end with, with this. 
10 years ago, you could not engage with users you had not met. And what social media does for us today is it allows us to speak to customers, not only that we haven't met, but probably will never ever meet in our life. You know, and I think that's kind of a, a key, key motivating driver for social media in the space today. Thanks, guys.